recently picked up the Mac Studio N1 Max and have been trying it out for the past few days and I have a lot of thoughts about it that I want to share with you today. So much so that I don't even really know where to start. Do I start with the unboxing? No, that was, that was very chaotic. That was too chaotic. You know what, let's just dive right into it. But before we do so, if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related content. Leave in the comments other videos you want to see. Tech, coding, career, personal, you know the drill. Just drop them in the comments. Okay, enough of me talking, let's just get right into it. I think a good place to start with this is with the design. As far as appearance goes, it looks similar to the Mac Mini, but don't let that fool you. It has a lot more power. Another thing that I really like about this is it fits under most displays. As you can see behind me here, it's fitting under my studio display. And if we really wanna get technical here, it is 3.7 inches tall and 7.7 .7 inches in length. One thing as someone who works from home that is really important to me is having an office space that looks really clean and chic. While I do not have an eye of an interior designer by any means, I do know when I walk into a space and it makes me feel kind of zen or just organized, my mind goes along with that. And having this setup and it be so clean and chic when I walk into my office really makes when I go into my office, makes me wanna do work even though sometimes I rarely wanna do work, but having a nice setup really helps the process. Okay, let's talk a little bit about ports. Ports are one of those things that I feel like are not spoken enough about until they are, we need more of them. And I think they're kind of underrated in that sense, but Apple did not disappoint with the amount of ports they provided. On the front of the M1 Max, it includes two USB-C ports and an SD card slot. And I really like this that there's not too much going on because it, maintains its kind of chic and effortless look. On the back though, you will find more ports. On the back, it includes four Thunderbolt 4 ports, as well as a 10 GB ethernet port, two USB-A ports, an HDMI, and an audio jack. So as I mentioned, Apple did not disappoint with providing a lot of different ports for us. Okay, let's move on to the studio display. The studio display has a 27 inch 5K screen that can reach 600 nits of brightness and also includes a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. I have been testing out the camera a lot as well for different FaceTime calls I've been on and I'll get to more of that later on. Another thing that when I unboxed my studio display, I started looking for almost right away was the power on and off button. And I quickly realized that it didn't have one. And at first I thought, this is kind of strange. Where is my power button? Where can I turn it on or off? Same when it comes to volume and brightness. But after setting it up, one thing I quickly realized is, as always, this is done intentionally. As you connect the studio display to a host, the whole point is that when you have it connected to a host, it's under the assumption that you will be using your studio display. So hence, there's no need for an extra added power on and off button, which I really like because when I'm looking at the studio display, it's very chic and clean and kind of, what is it, effortless? I don't know if that's the right word. But what it does is when it, buttons are added, no matter how much I try and keep my screen, like anything clean, if it has buttons on it, it's not happening. So I'm actually a big fan of the fact that there is no power button or really any buttons on the studio display. Now this is very easily still controlled, of course, for volume and brightness by either the keyboard or in your control center. Now, in terms of ports, it has three USB-C ports that let you connect, power, and charge your devices. From networking and external drives to your keyboard, mouse, or iPhone. Okay, let's get into what I was most curious about, as I am when I test out any new device really, which is how does this perform when I'm coding? And for this, of course, I was programming on Xcode and really getting a sense of the performance using Xcode. Speaking of performance though, according to Apple, the Mac Studio with M1 Max will deliver 2.5 times faster CPU performance than a 27 inch iMac. When I started playing around with Xcode, one of the things that pretty much instantly stood out to me and I think is honestly my favorite thing about, about this is the fact that you can run multiple simulators at once. I really liked this because when I'm coding and getting into my workflow or building a new feature on an app, I want to spend my time actually coding. 
I get frustrated when too much of my time is spent other t places, especially if I'm waiting for a simulator to run or build. And then if I want to test it out from iPhone 13 to an iPad to different versions, it takes time. And with this, you can run multiple simulators at once, which I absolutely love. It's really interesting to me too, to be able to see what you are building on multiple screens at once. It kind of gives you a sense of, okay, maybe this design looks really strange on specific screen sizes. How can I kind of alter it to make it fit for, for all screen sizes? And it just makes your workflow a lot more smooth in my opinion. I have a little project up here and as you can see, it runs with many different simulators quickly and it also helps me be more efficient with my time. While I have this up though, let's talk about the quality of graphics. As I mentioned before, 27 inch in screen, 5K retina display, also 14.5 million pixels. It really brings you in from the moment you are on screen. I mean, you can just see looking at these simulators on Xcode, just how vivid the colors are. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the webcam. And if this was a few years ago, I wouldn't even really think to bring up the webcam because it was something that I next to never used. But now, as we all know, as we are working from home, working hybrid, we are using the webcam a lot. Whether you like it or not, virtual meetings are here to stay. And I know one of the worst things that can happen when we are on a virtual call and we are having a meeting is when you get a last minute request to go on webcam. At least though, when you are using this webcam, you know the quality will be there. And if you're using center stage, it will just be more engaging as well. While it keeps you centered in the frame while you move around, I have had quite a few FaceTimes now using this and it honestly, especially when the other person on the other side is using center stage as well, it really makes the call or the video call so much more engaging, like you're almost in the room with them, which I really like. Lastly, I want to talk about spatial audio. If you are like me, when you get into a good workflow, you want to listen to good music. It really helps me get in the zone when I'm coding or creating content to feel like I'm, there's nothing around me that's distracting and it just puts me in, in the right mood, I guess you could say. One of my biggest challenges I have found is where exactly to play my music from. Should I play it from my phone? Should I buy some external speakers? What is going to be the best result for me when I am playing music? I was really excited to test out the spatial audio and honestly, it felt as though I was kind of like in a concert hall or I was coding on stage. I don't know what the term would be. I felt like a rock star. Let's just say that. Actually, something really interesting is this is the highest fidelity speaker system ever created for Mac. It has spatial audio that immerses you in sound. As I mentioned, it's kind of like having your own concert hall or personal movie theater. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up there. Those were some of my main or my favorite features from the Mac Studio M1 Max. I also want to point out there is so much more to this that I'm not saying. Whether you are a photographer or a 3D graphic artist or video editor or, or beyond, content creator, coder, there's just so much to it that no matter what your interest is, you will really find something for you through this. To kind of sum it up, some of my favorite features include, for the design anyways, that how it just really takes my workplace to the next level by looking clean and elegant. As far as coding goes, I mean, I think I raved about this enough. Being able to run multiple simulators at once was a huge benefit for me and something that I can never go back to running just one now, I think. When it comes to the audio, it literally, I mean, it's its what I'm always going to use now. And I wish I could just share that with you through camera, through screen, but it just wouldn't come across properly. But just, you're gonna have to take my word for this one. I linked it down below. So make sure to go check this out because honestly, I've spent the last few days playing around on it and it really exceeded all of my expectations. Thank you all for watching. I hope you found this video very helpful and insightful. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related content, and I'll see you all soon. Thanks everyone.